OK, so if you are given a big balloon containing a mole of helium, there are a couple of things you can immediately work out. You would know that because of Avogadro's constant, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of helium in the balloon. And you could look up the periodic table and see that one mole of helium atoms weighs 4.003 grams. So the mass of the gas in the balloon is 4.003 grams. In this video, we're going to formalize these conversions so you can do them for any pure substance and any number of moles. And we're also going to add a new conversion that will let you work out how much volume gaseous substances occupy under certain conditions. These conversions are very like unit conversions. You're just changing the way you measure your substance. They're not mysterious or complicated, but sometimes it takes some practice to get smooth and quick at them. So do as much practice as you need until they become routine. They are the basis of most chemical calculations. So we're going to draw a map that will relate moles to the other ways of measuring substances. But let's leave our specific helium example here and make a more general map. So we'll start with moles. Remember, this is our special number that essentially allows us to skip count how many atoms or molecules we have in a sample. Now, in the same way that sometimes you need to convert dozens into a plain number, two dozen eggs is 24 eggs, for example, sometimes we want to know the actual number of atoms or molecules in a sample, rather than how many moles of atoms or molecules we have. So I'll put number of particles up the top here. That's something we'll want to convert to and from. Now, what's the conversion factor that gets us between moles and numbers of particles? Well, it's Avogadro's number, Na. 6.022 times 10 to the 23 tells us how many particles there are per mole. And the formula that relates these three quantities, Avogadro's constant, the number of particles you have, and the number of moles you have, is here. Na equals particles divided by the number of moles. We'll do some examples using this in a few minutes. How else might we want to measure a sample? Well, by mass. And the conversion factor that relates the moles and the mass of a particular substance is that substance's molar mass in grams per mole. Remember that this conversion factor has the same value as the mass of one mole, but the units indicate that it's a ratio relating the number of moles to the mass. The formula is here. Molar mass equals mass divided by moles. Finally, I'm going to introduce you to a third kind of conversion. This applies only to gases, and we'll be exploring it more fully later in the course. For now, you'll just have a taste. If you know the number of moles of a gas, you can convert directly to its volume using the conversion factor called the molar volume. Before I show you how that works, though, I need to explain this little acronym here, STP. The volume of a gas changes if you change its temperature or pressure. So whenever you're stating a gas volume, you have to say what the temperature and the pressure were when you measured that volume. They could be anything, but scientists have defined a set of standard conditions which are useful when you're doing measurements or calculations. They're called standard temperature and pressure, or STP. It's STP when the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, or you could express it as 273 Kelvin. And the pressure is one atmosphere, which is the average air pressure at sea level. Or if you measure it in kilopascals, it's 101.3 kilopascals. So if we want to convert moles of gas into a volume of gas, note that this really is just for gases. It doesn't work for liquids. We use the molar volume. The molar volume is a ratio, like molar mass. It says that a gas, any gas, occupies 22.4 litres per mole. That is, one mole of gas will occupy 22.4 litres. This is, of course, as long as you're at STP. If you change the temperature or pressure, the molar volume will change. And we'll learn how to deal with that later on. For now, we're just going to assume that the gases are always at STP. So the molar volume equals the volume of your sample over the number of moles in your sample. And so you can convert between these measurements. OK, let's try some examples. I'm going to work through these examples using the unit conversion format that I've shown you previously. Remember, though, that it's just as valid and you may prefer to use the formula that I've shown you on the mole map. OK, first example, if you have 1.9 times 10 to the 22 molecules of caffeine, how many moles of caffeine is this? So we write down what we know as a fraction. 
and then we think about what conversion factor we need. Well, if we go back to our mole map, the conversion factor between number of particles and moles is Avogadro's number. So we know that 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles, in this case our particles are molecules, so I'm going to write molecules, is equivalent to one mole. And just as in unit conversions, we can write our conversion factor uh, one way or the other. We can have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules over one mole, or we could write it the other way up. It is completely equivalent either way. Which version you use depends on which unit you're trying to cancel out in your calculations. Here we want to cancel out molecules and be left with moles. So we're going to choose the version that has the 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules on the bottom. We can then cancel out the molecules and we're left with moles. When we run through the calculation, it looks like this. And the answer it gives us is 0.03155 moles. Now we should check significant figures. If we look back, we find that the number of molecules we were given at the start of the problem has two significant figures, the 1.9. So we need to round our final answer to two sig figs as well. Now just a quick reminder, if you plug these numbers into your calculator and you didn't come up with 0.032 moles, one possibility is this. When you enter the number into your calculator, you need to make sure that you use this button to put in the exponent. So for instance, to enter 1.9 times 10 to the 22, I would enter 1.9 then I would press the times 10 to the button and then put in the exponent, 22. Now if I add equals, you can see that formats the number uh, correctly. Avoid the temptation to use this function here. On some calculators, this may actually have its own button. On this particular uh, calculator emulator, it has it as one of the shift functions. But it is possible to put in 1.9 times, then we use the shift function to get 10 to the, and then type in the exponent like that. That looks exactly the same. But when you do calculations using this number entered in that way, the calculator doesn't treat it as a single number. It treats it as 1.9 and separately as times 10 to the 22. That may not seem like a big deal, but when you get into order of operations, it means that the calculator misunderstands what you want to do. You could try it now. Try doing this calculation, 1.9 times 10 to the 22 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Try it first using the times 10 to the button that you've got and then try it again using the uh, shift function or whatever the equivalent button is on your calculator. You should see a difference in the answer. So let's try the next example. We're given a mass of sodium, 0.21 grams, and we're asked to convert this to moles of sodium. So I'll first write down what I know. There's my mass. Now, I want to convert from mass to moles. So the conversion factor that I'm going to need is the molar mass. So I need to go to the periodic table and I need to find sodium and find the molar mass of sodium which is 22.989 grams per mole. Now in this problem I want to cancel out the grams and turn it into moles. So I'm going to have to turn my molar mass conversion factor upside down so that the grams is on the bottom and the moles is on the top like this. The grams now cancel out and I'm left with moles. I just need to run through the calculation. And I find that it comes out as 9.1348 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Now I need to look back in, uh, at the values that I used in the calculation to find the lowest number of sig figs. And that's the mass, which is given to two significant figures. So I'm going to round this to two significant figures, giving 9.1 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Okay, another example. This time we have 0.21 moles of chlorine gas filling a jar at STP. Remember that's standard temperature and pressure. And we want to know what is the volume of the jar. So this conversion is going from moles of chlorine to volume of chlorine. And the conversion factor that we're going to use is the molar volume, which is 22.4 litres per mole. What I know from the problem is that I have 
0.21 moles of chlorine. And I need to arrange my conversion factor so that the moles cancel out and I'm left with litres because I'm looking for the volume. So the way that I've written the conversion factor here with the litres on the top and the moles on the bottom is the correct way around for this problem because it allows the moles to be cancelled out and I'll be left with litres, which gives me 4.704 litres. Again, I check my sig figs. I had two sig figs in my original volume, so I round my final answer to two sig figs as well.